What's up guys? So last week's video we talked about the ideal rep range for building muscle. And in the comment section of that video, I had a lot of people ask questions about what is the right amount of rest that they should be getting in between their sets for building muscle. So that's what we're going to jump into today. All right, so the first thing that we need to consider when we're talking about rest between sets is what your goal is. Is your goal strength? In other words, to go into the gym and feel as strong as possible from set to set, or is your goal hypertrophy, better known as building muscle? I'm going to assume that most of you that are watching this channel are more focused on hypertrophy, but we'll talk about this just for a second. So if your goal is to be as strong as possible, you're going into the gym, you're doing one rep max, et cetera, you're going to want to get about three to four minutes of rest between sets. Now, if your goal is to build muscle, you're looking at roughly 60 to 90 seconds between sets. Now, instead of me just throwing this number at you, some arbitrary number, in true ATT, advanced train technique fashion, we're gonna jump into the why real quick. We're gonna try to keep it simple just because I've got my marker and the whiteboard, doesn't mean I'm gonna do a 35 minute video like last time. We're gonna keep this really short here. So, I'm gonna take my micro eraser here, my ridiculously small eraser, and we're gonna jump into this. So, why 60 to 90 seconds? Well, last week we talked about the difference between anaerobic energy systems versus aerobic energy systems, and that comes into play a little bit here. So, let's talk about that. Well, anaerobic, this is gonna be our weight training. This is going into the gym, this is lifting weights. Aerobic, this is going to be maybe our cardio, getting on the elliptical machine, maybe doing you know, the treadmill or going out for a jog. So, most of us are focused on this, but we're gonna talk about this for comparison's sake. So, last week we talked about how our body produces ATP. So ATP is necessary for making our muscles work, right? So we need ATP. You don't need to worry about anything else, just keep that in your mind, ATP, we need it. So in an anaerobic state, our body converts glucose to ATP. Over here, in aerobic state, both glucose and fat, either or, it's an and or situation to produce ATP. Now here's the difference. In an anaerobic state, that means we do not need oxygen. So this is without oxygen versus aerobic. Think about it. If you're in the gym, you're running, you're breathing heavy, this is with oxygen. So here's the important part. It's the byproduct. In an anaerobic state, the byproduct of this whole energy process is lactic acid. Now, there's always someone who comments on my videos and they want to get really technical about this. So I'm just going to throw this out there real quick. There is a difference between lactic acid and blood lactate levels, but we're not cramming for our biology test here. We're just a bunch of people who want to build muscle. So let's not get complicated here. Let's keep it simple. So we're just going to call it lactic acid. Over here on the aerobic side, the byproduct is going to be carbon dioxide. So think about it. If you're out going for a run, breathing heavy, we're breathing heavy, exhaling carbon dioxide. So that's the byproduct here. If we're over here and we're working out hard, you know, really, you know, in the middle of that set, the muscle starts to burn, that's lactic acid. Okay, so a comparison here. Lactic acid, and we're gonna get into this in a second, is not the enemy, but it does slow down performance. So as lactic acid starts to build up, what happens? Well, our performance, our muscle's performance goes down. That's an arrow, let's fill it in. Fancy arrow. Performance goes down when lactic acid starts to build up. All right, so what do we need to do? Well, we need to flush that lactic acid out. How we do that? We do that through rest. So that's our 60 to 90 seconds right here. That's one way. So breathing, you sit down, you start to breathe. Oxygen is going to help with this. Drinking water, actually, believe it or not, is going to help with this. Another thing that helps is stretching or even massage. I used to train with a guy a long time ago when I was doing bodybuilding shows, you take a wood rolling pin like you roll bread dough with and he would actually roll the muscle to help flush out that lactic acid to increase circulation. So go ahead, 
breathe, drink water, stretch, then you're gonna jump in to your next set. So what's another way to work around this lactic acid? Well, that's where supersets come in. Everyone wonders, what's the benefit really of doing a superset? I do a lot of supersets, why? Because I have a limited amount of time to get in the gym and get my workout done. So for me, I'm looking at ways I can speed up the work around lactic acid. So I'll train a lot of times antagonist muscle groups. So biceps along with triceps, why? Because as I train biceps and lactic acid starts to build up after that set, then I can jump into triceps where the muscle is nice and fresh. So I can work through that set giving biceps time to recuperate that's the advantage of doing supersets. So that's why I do it because I'm able to get in the gym and I'm able to knock it out quick. What are the other reasons why 60 to 90 seconds? Well, they've shown with shorter rest times that it actually helps increase growth hormone levels. Now that's gonna be responsible, obviously, not only for building muscle, but even for fat loss as well, an increase in growth hormone. So shorter rest periods, are going to help elicit better muscle growth, whereas longer rest times are going to help with strength. So that's why I say you gotta go back to the beginning. What's your goal? Do you wanna get stronger or do you wanna build muscle? If you wanna get stronger, longer rest times. If you wanna build more muscle, shorter rest times. Okay, lactic acid. We talk about this like it's a bad thing and I mentioned this before. It's not a bad thing. Matter of fact, it's a good thing. Why? Because the lactic acid accumulation is actually a trigger for this as well. You look at a lot of studies, again, here's another crappy arrow. This is also going to help trigger increased growth hormone levels. Now the last thing, and there's no real science behind it, although there probably is some real science, but I'm not a science guy, I'm just a regular gym rat in the gym trying to build muscle, trying to share information with you guys, is the pump. The pump. When I get into the gym, train hard, little rest, I end up getting a better pump in the gym. So how's the pump gonna help you? Well, that's going to make sure that you're getting adequate oxygen and blood flow to the muscles. That's going to help with transport of amino acids. It's gonna help transport growth hormone, everything that's essential to building muscle. So the pump is very important as well. So volume in your training, keeping that momentum, keeping that blood flowing, keeping that pump is going to help you build muscle. So it's not just all about looks. That in a nutshell is why I go 60, 90 seconds rest. So how do I apply that to my own workouts? Well, if any of you guys follow my routines, you know I do a 20, 10, 10, 15 rep structure. So it's four total sets. So the first set is going to be my recruitment set. So I pick a weight that is going to be very, very difficult. Even at 12, 15, it's a struggle. And then I squeeze out five more. Then I come in after 60 to 90 seconds rest. And that is, unless I'm doing a superset, then that's gonna be probably more like 15 to 30 seconds on a superset. I come in and I pick a weight that I can do for 10 reps, but I'm still chasing that same squeeze, that same burn that I got over here. And if I can't get that same feeling, then I drop down the weight until I can get that same kind of muscle contraction that I got at 20 reps. So that's gonna be my second set, 60 to 90 seconds rest. I'm gonna do my third set. Then I come back and I grab the same weight that I use on set number one, and I do it for 15 reps. Why? Because if I did this as hard as I should have, I should only be able to get 15. By the time I get to 10, I should be dying. And then I'm gonna squeeze out five more to get that 15. So that's my rep structure. That's why I do it that way. It's like a checks and balance system. This is chasing the feeling, making sure that I'm using good form, getting that peak contraction, using a weight that I can really uh, control and get, like I said, a really good discipline squeeze, making sure that, you know, feeling that lactic acid burn, making sure I'm getting that pump and then I jump up in weight and I come down in reps for sets two and three and then I go back to my original weight. So that is how I build all of my exercises. So for my sets and reps and that's how much rest I get. So if it's non-superset 60, 90 seconds, if I'm doing supersets, it's pretty much the time that it takes to walk from one exercise to the next. 
So it's you know in that 15 to 30 second range. All right, so that's my two cents for whatever it's worth on ideal rest for building muscle. I know I had uh, two people in particular. I had Matt and I had Paul who had asked questions about that. So Matt, Paul, if you guys are watching, I hope this answered your question. Uh, this week, I've got the very first episode. Hopefully, we're working on it right now, working on a brand new series for you guys. So hoping to launch that first video series this week. So very excited about that. So make sure to go ahead and stay tuned because I've got some new cool stuff coming your way along with new ATT videos every single week. So Wednesdays, look for ATT videos. And then we're gonna start off with one video a week at first for this brand new series. And hopefully we're gonna work up to two. So my, uh, my hope is that we get to the point where we're doing three videos a week for you guys. So I'm excited to uh, bring you a bunch of new content and I appreciate all the support as always. So until next time, this has been ATT.